Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to go ahead and hop into VS Code and get it so that we can generate a React application from scratch. The reason why I don't use Create React App is because it gets a whole bunch of boilerplate that I don't really want. I'm going to go through explaining every little step. So let's go ahead and hop in and I'll see you guys in there. We're inside VS Code here and now what we need to go ahead and do is set up our React application. Now I could go ahead and use the Create React App, but I don't want to because it's kind of yucky. Uh, it's not really that it's yucky. It's because it gives a bunch of boilerplate that we don't really want. So I'm going to to go ahead and just create a new folder here. I'm going to call this front end. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal with control utility. I'm going to CD into front end. Now all we really need to do is create a node project. So go ahead and say npm init. And I'm going to go ahead and fill all this out. So front end is fine. Version 1.1 is fine. Description, we're not going to have one. We're not going to have an entry point. I get to put just dash Y, I suppose. So now that is set up. So to actually have a React application, we are going to have a couple of things. So I actually have some things pulled up on the side. So first, what I'm going to go ahead and do is install all the dependencies that we need for our project. First, we are going to go ahead and npm I and we need at first of all, actually just do the regular ones at react at react dash Dom and at react dash scripts and at TypeScript. So go ahead and install all of these dependencies. And then we're going to need a few types for TypeScript. So we'll go ahead and install those after this is finished. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to install the types. So npm i and we need at types slash node. We need at type slash react. And we need at type slash react dom. React oh types slash react slash dom. I'm just kind of foregoing all of the testing and things like that. We're not going to be testing at this moment. If we do end up going back and testing, I'll add that stuff in. We primarily just need the TypeScript and things of that sort. So now opening up this, we're going to go ahead and get rid of the description. We're going to get rid of the index and we are going to write a few scripts. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of test for now. And the first script we're going to have is start. So this is just going to be react dash scripts start. So this will start up our dev server build. Once again, react has made it really easy for us. React dash scripts and this one build. We'll also have a eject for now. I mean, I don't, I guess we don't really need eject. We just need start and build. We do not need the author and we do not need the license. One other thing that we do need above these scripts and I'm going to go ahead and reorganize these so it's more like the actual create react app one so it looks a little bit more familiar uh, we need this the only other thing that we need is private equal true in here so let's go ahead and add that private is true cool so now we just have a couple of things to set up for ES lint and some browsers again I'm not sure how much of this is actually required but I'm going to add it just in case so first we'll have ES lint config so in here, we're just going to say extends colon, and this is an empty array. And this is going to be react dash app. So it does use ESLint, I'm assuming. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll go ahead and add browser list. Browsers list. This is going to be an object. And this is going to say production colon. And inside here. We're going to say greater than 0.2%. We're going to say not dead. And we are going to say not OP underscore mini call. So again, this is something that comes with react by default. Um, I'm adding it just in case we probably don't need it. Uh, but even if we add this, it's going to be fine. It's going to be less bloat than what the create react app normally gives us. Go ahead and do this part. From version, go ahead and add last one and then Firefox version. And then finally, last one and then Safari version. And that is our entire package.json. Theoretically, if we wanted to, we could run or start or whatever. It's not going to do anything at the moment. So the next thing that we actually need to do is make a uh, TS config. This is for our TypeScript. So this again is going to go into the, the main front end folder. And I'm going to call this TS 
ts config dot json i believe and inside here we're just going to put in a few things so compile options and this is going to say our target will be es6 or es5 es5 all right our lib will be an array and this will have dom it will have dom.iterable this is lowercase according to this not doom dom.iterable and then we also need es next so again i'm assuming that these are some things that we actually need for um react and typescript considering that it adds it so i'm not going to mess up um, this next we need allow js to true this one we could probably set to false uh, but i'll go ahead and set to true i'm assuming that's just going to say hey do you want it to allow people to write js instead of ts i'll just put true there uh, skip lib check is equal to true again this is the setting that react would normally set up es modular interp true allow whoops next one is allow synthetic something allow synthetic um default imports true and essentially all i'm doing here is really taking the things that we actually need from create react app and not the stuff that we don't strict will be true next we have force consistent casing and file names I don't think I've ever seen this actually make you do anything, to be honest, but force consistent naming of file names. True. Again, that could probably be ignored. Um, so no fall through. No fall through cases and switch. True. Again, I don't think we need that. I can probably go through and change some of these. Module is going to be ES next. Okay, our module resolution is going to be node. Our resolve JSON module will be true. Our isolated modules will be true. Our no emit will be true. And our JSX will be React JSX. Then we have one last thing to include, include, and this is going to be SRC. So that is going to be for our TypeScript compiling. Again, most of this we probably don't need. Like for example, we probably do not need these ones. We probably don't need some other ones, but I'm going to keep it as is just to be safe because this is what React uses in the React or Create React app. I'm just trying to get rid of all the extra files that I delete anyway, for the most part. That is good to go. So now all we need to do is make our public package and our source package. So inside of public, say right click, new folder, public and inside here this is where our index.html is going to go this is our main website or our main page that everything gets injected into and inside of our thing we're just going to say doc type we are going to say um html and we can say five and i guess i didn't need to do all this and this makes us a nice pretty document so in here we'll go ahead and say footer and if we wanted to we could go ahead and pull in our images. So give me one moment. I'm going to see if I can actually get this to work. So I have an ICO file that will actually show up in the icon. So let's go ahead and go about getting that connected. We just have to do like one little thing here and that is do a icon. So we're going to go ahead and say right here, maybe say link relation equal to icon. And this is going to be href equal to percent public underscore URL. And then we are going to do percent URL percent slash footer dot ICO. Later on, I'm also going to add in some logos and stuff but for the time being. We'll just have this footer icon. And then at this point, everything should be good to go. The only thing that we do need to go ahead and add is we need to say no script and then say you need 
to enable JavaScript to run this app. And then we're also going to have a div, div.id. Actually, I don't know if it works like that. Div, it's like this ID. There we go. And that is good. So this is actually gonna be the root ID. And this is our main index.html. That's all we really have to do inside a public. So one final thing that we have to do is go ahead and change up the source folder. And that is going to need our app in our index.tsx. So go ahead and make one more folder inside of front end src. This is where our source code goes. We're going to make a new file called this app.tsx. And inside here, we're just going to import react from react. I did it backwards, of course. React from React. And we are going to just say, uh, I guess we could an RFCE. But the problem with that is RFCE. The problem with that is that it doesn't actually make it an arrow function. This one does, though. Okay, cool. There is one with an arrow function. So now this is just going to return app. That's fine. We can make it return hello or something. And I want this to export const app equals to that and save. And now we need to set up the index.tsx to actually go about rendering this. So go ahead and do index.tsx. And inside here, we're again going to import react from react. And then we are going to import react dom from react dom so react dash dom slash clients okay and then we're going to import app from app and const root is equal to react dot dom react dom dot create root and inside here we're going to say document dot get element by id and then this will be root and we need to say as html element because this is typescript cool cool finally we can say root dot render and it's safe to run it in uh Re react uh, strict mode so react dot strict mode the reason why this is here is because react is jank um, and it helps with the jankiness and save so now this is a bare bones react application this is all you actually need to run and actually we probably could have gotten rid of a bunch of stuff in here and it's fine let's go ahead and try to run this so we'll go ahead and say npm start and it's running the react scripts as we expect and now if i go ahead and pull this over once it loads you will see hello because that's what's in our app and you also see our little icon. So this is good to go. Unfortunately, that's gonna be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, please sure leave a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.